What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video and welcome to part number 13 of the Not So Tiny House build series. In this week's video, I'm gonna show you how I installed the mini split units in this tiny house. That's right, units. I went with a multi-zone system. So I have three of these indoor units, one in each bedroom and one in this kind of living room kitchen area. So that way we have independent climate control in all three rooms, which is awesome. And I guess before we get too far into it, let's just talk about some of the components of a mini split system. System. So first of all, you've got the indoor units, which are also called the evaporators, and those are connected to an outdoor unit, which is called the condenser, with what are called line sets or refrigerant lines. Also running between the indoor unit and outdoor unit is a communication wire, which provides power, which runs through the outdoor unit, and it also provides communication so that the outdoor unit knows when to turn on based on the temperature the indoor unit is measuring in the room, as well as the input you're giving it from the remote. So it's a pretty simple system and the cool thing about the particular system I used, which is made by Mr. Cool, who provided this whole system for me, which was awesome, huge shout out to them, is that you can install it yourself because the line set comes pre-charged. And typically you would have to work with a HVAC professional to install this type of system because typically you need to pull a vacuum on that line set, which most DIYers do not have access to the equipment to do that. But with this system, you basically just thread everything together, check for leaks, and you're pretty much good to go. So in a typical mini split installation, you would probably just be drilling a hole right through an exterior wall because a lot of times these are installed in finished spaces where running them on inside walls isn't really possible. But in this video, I'm gonna be showing more of the process of installing it in new construction, which obviously this house is. And so that gave me the advantage of being able to run those line sets through my inside walls and then under the house so that I didn't have to deal with trying to cover those up. So since these indoor units were obviously gonna be installed permanently, I needed to go ahead and put whatever wall covering I was gonna have up before I added the units. And in my case, that was drywall. I am doing plywood walls on the kind of exterior walls, but the partition walls are all gonna be drywall. So we started by hanging the drywall in the guest bedroom here. Also, I went ahead and ripped that first panel in half. That way the two drywall seams that we would need to tape in mud would be far away from the installed mini split unit. I also went ahead and set up my line laser to make sure that first panel was installed nice and level since the other panels would be referencing off of that. And I also picked up some pretty awesome drywall specific tools for this installation process since I'm gonna be installing a decent amount of drywall in this house. And those tools included a collated screw gun, and then I also picked up a drywall cutting tool, sometimes called a roto zip. And this allowed me to cut around those outlet boxes and the door openings super, super quickly without having to use a drywall saw. And man, <laughs> I don't know how I lived without this thing in my life when installing drywall previously. It makes it so, so easy to cut around outlet boxes. And I'm really excited to have this tool in my tool arsenal. And I am gonna cover all this in more detail when I do a video on installing drywall later on in this series, but I figured I'd just mention those two tools since you'll be seeing me using them a good bit in this video. The last piece of drywall that needed to be hung in this room needed to be cut to match the roof pitch. And I also needed to cut around an outlet here, which is gonna be for the LED light strips, which are gonna be running along the sides of these rooms as kind of accent lighting. And I'm super excited to add those and I'll talk more about those in a later video. So with that drywall hung, we could go ahead and get the first indoor unit mounted. And this is a 9,000 BTU unit, which is honestly kind of overkill. These bedrooms are only about 125 square feet, but that's about the smallest size that these types of units come in. And again, these will give both bedrooms independent climate control. So I think that's gonna be a great option for this house. And all of these indoor units come with a cardboard template so you can lay out the exact location really easily. And that also allows you to go ahead and mark your screw holes. And I just ran a drywall screw through the holes on the template to mark my holes. And I had four holes for where I'll be mounting the mounting bracket to the wall. And then another hole where I'll run the line set through. So after marking those hole locations, I went ahead and removed the mounting bracket from the back of the unit. And then I could get the bracket mounted to the wall using some two and a half inch screws, making sure it was nice and level. After getting the bracket mounted, I went ahead and drilled the hole for the line set, which is supposed to be a three and a half inch hole. I went ahead and bumped it up to a four inch hole just to give me ample wiggle room trying to maneuver this through these indoor walls. So the line set that comes attached to the unit itself comes bent pretty tight down to the unit. So first you need to go ahead and bend that out. 
Again, you need to be pretty careful with these lines. They are copper. You can kink them if you're not careful. So I did that nice and slowly. And then we could feed that line set as well as the communication wire through that hole I had drilled and basically set the unit on top of the mounting bracket, making sure everything was positioned nicely. And then I could snap it into place onto the bracket to attach it permanently. <laughs> it's on. And once I snapped it in place on the bracket, that first unit was hung on the wall. I repeated the whole process again in the other bedroom in this house, the master bedroom. I did need to cut around the water heater lines to hang some of this drywall, which was a little bit annoying, but again, that drywall cutting tool made quick work of that. This time before mounting the unit, I did go ahead and drill a three and a half inch hole through the top plate in the wall behind where the unit will mount so that I could feed those lines through that hole while I was mounting it because otherwise the ceiling joist in this area would have gotten in my way. And after feeding that line set through the hole and setting that unit in place, the second unit was installed. The last unit to install was the one you see above my head here, which is in our main room. This is an 18,000 BTU unit, which is honestly really, really overkill for this space. I have the same size unit at my shop, which is 1,200 square feet, which is about twice the size of this whole house. So I definitely could have gone with a 12,000 or even probably 9,000 BTU unit. This wall was a little bit trickier to drywall because some things were out of plane. So you need to whip out the electric planer and also fur a couple of areas where the blocking wasn't quite meeting up with the studs, but once I had that done, I could get the drywall hung. And once again, I sized this piece of drywall to keep those seams away from the mini split unit itself, because taping and mudding around this mini split unit, if those seams were really tight to it, would have been a pain in the butt later on. With that, all three indoor units were hung so I could move outside to get the outdoor unit or condenser dealt with. And we decided to wall mount this unit, but that did change a little later, as you'll see. But anyway, we could go ahead and get the wall mount bracket installed on the house. And the spacing on this is a little bit weird. Definitely doesn't match up with your conventional framing spacing. I had to find a spot where it would work and under one of the windows ended up working out well so that I could get both the uprights plus the upper rail on the mounting bracket all mounted to studs because this outdoor unit is super heavy. I think it weighs about 90 pounds. So you definitely wanna make sure it is well secured to your wall. And I used three and a half inch structural screws to mount this mounting bracket. And I also added some rubber washers behind the mounting bracket just to kind of keep some of that vibration from the unit itself from vibrating into the wall and making it noisy here inside the house. And considering I could hang from the mounting bracket, I think it was gonna be plenty strong enough for the outdoor unit. Next, we could lift the condenser onto the mounting bracket, adding some more rubber washers under the feet, again, to help with vibration, and then bolted the condenser to the mounting bracket to make sure it wasn't going anywhere. After getting the condenser bolted onto the bracket, I went ahead and opened the cover, which covers up all of the line set connections, only to find the actual rubber washers that were supposed to come with the unit. You have got to be joking. So pro tip, you don't need to go out and buy rubber washers. Everything you need comes with the mounting bracket and the mini split unit itself. Next, we can move back inside and get holes drilled through the bottom plate and through the floor for the line set to run through. And I made sure these were in line with the holes we had drilled in the top plate earlier. And once those holes were drilled, we could move back outside, get that line set unrolled and then run it up through the floor of the house. And where this line set needed to run here on this unit in the kind of living room kitchen area was a little bit tricky because it had some bins to work around, but I just took my time and bent those slowly and basically worked the line set so that they got close to where they needed to be and then I could actually make the connections. Connecting these lines is super simple. They come with color-coded plastic caps, so you really can't screw it up. Uh, I would just make sure to go ahead and thread them together by hand so you don't cross-thread them, which could create some leaks. And once they're threaded together, you can tighten them up with a couple of wrenches. And one note here, only one of these connections is actually able to twist. The other one is static. So make sure you take note of that when you're using your wrenches so you don't inadvertently unthread one of the connections, which again will create a leak. Once I had fully tightened the connection, I sprayed everything down with soapy water to check for leaks, which thankfully we didn't have any of. And so then I could go ahead and wrap both of these connections with the sound deadening pads that are included with this system. And those sound deadening pads just help keep everything at that connection point nice and quiet. After adding the sound deadening pads, I went ahead and added the foam insulation as well over the line set. And this is gonna keep those line sets from sweating inside the walls in this case, which would obviously be a major problem that would probably lead to mold growth over time. So you really wanna make sure everything in this whole system is well insulated, including the drain line, which I'll show in a bit, which I had to add my own insulation for. 
After adding the insulation to the line set, I went ahead and wrapped the whole thing in the included vinyl tape, which is really meant for UV protection, but also served to kind of help keep everything nice and tidy inside these wall cavities. And then I could go ahead and use some metal strapping to totally secure the line set to the framing of the house. Next, I could go ahead and connect the included drainage hose to the drainage hose whip that comes off of the back of the indoor unit. And while this connection is probably plenty sturdy on its own, I wanted a little bit extra insurance and went ahead and wrapped it in some silicone tape. After connecting those two sections, I went ahead and insulated the rest of that drain pipe as well using some black foam insulation. And again, that's gonna keep that drain line from sweating inside the walls, which again could lead to mold growth, which would be very bad. Once I had the rest of that drain line insulated, I could run the drain line as well as the communication wire down through the floor of the house. And I did make sure that the drain line was oriented on the underside of the line set and the communication wire at this point. And this just helps to ensure the drain pipe will flow properly. Once everything was routed down through the bottom plate, I wrapped everything in more of that vinyl tape, which again, wasn't totally necessary, but kept everything nice and tidy and made sure that insulation stayed put. And then I went back and added some stud guard plates, which will keep me from inadvertently driving a screw or nail into these pipes in the future. I can then repeat the process for the other two line sets coming from the other two indoor units, running those line sets up through the floor, connecting them, checking for leaks, connecting that drain line, insulating that drain line, wrapping everything with that vinyl tape, and finally adding those stud guards. I also added fire foam to all of these penetrations through the top plates and bottom plates, and this is required by code, and this fire foam helps to keep smoke from spreading during a fire. It also helps to keep drafts from feeding a fire that's on a different level of the house. And I personally really like this fire foam versus the fire caulk because it spreads to fill these large openings, which is a lot easier in my opinion than trying to get caulk to fill these kind of penetrations. That's what she said. <laughs> Once that was done, I could move back outside to get the line sets run to the outdoor unit. And I went ahead and drilled a hole through the rim joist to run some of this line set through and installed the plastic sleeve that's included with this Mr. Cool system. So once the hole was drilled and the plastic sleeve was added, I could go ahead and run the line set through the hole. And this is where I ran into a bit of a problem. All right, so after all of that work trying to run this line set underneath the house for one of these mini split units, we came up about six inches short from getting it connected here to where the line set connects on the outside unit. So we're kind of having to go to plan B here rather than trying to order some custom line sets. Uh, and because we're kind of limited by the other line sets in the location of this unit, we're gonna move this from being wall mounted to mounted on the ground. And that's gonna make up the six inches that we need and basically just allow us to use all the same stuff we already have and continue on with the project. So not a huge deal, pretty easy to move this from the house down onto the ground. Just need to caulk a couple holes to fix that and uh, we can continue on working. So we got the condenser set on some concrete blocks that we leveled out on the ground in this area. And I think this is gonna be temporary. I went ahead and bought one of the plastic pads that a lot of these types of units are installed on. So once that arrives, I'll probably go ahead and slide that under the unit. But anyway, with the condenser in place, I could go ahead and get all the line sets attached to it. And this was basically the same process as attaching the line sets on the inside of the house. Everything was color coded, it just threaded together. Also, you'll notice that my electrician went ahead and wired up the outdoor unit to my panel, which is right there. And that is the one part of this project that you probably will need to have done by a tradesperson. And after checking for leaks on those line set connections, I could go ahead and open the refrigerant valves, which basically charge the whole system here. And this is really where you do not want to have leaks. So hopefully you've checked for leaks all along this process. If you do develop a leak, then you need to deal with it because otherwise your refrigerant is going to be leaking out, which is a very, very bad thing. Once I confirmed there were no leaks, I could go ahead and run that communication wire into the little box on the outdoor unit. And I ran the wire through a cable clamp and then got it wired up, which is dead simple. There's basically only three connections for each of these units and then a ground, and they are clearly labeled. There's really no messing it up. Once that was done, I could repeat the same process for the other two units, again, checking for leaks, opening those refrigerant valves, and then connecting the communication cable. And then I could open the master valves, which I didn't show in this clip. I <laughs> turned off the camera before I got that done. And then once those valves were open, I could flip on the breaker, go inside, and turn on the units to test them out. So in the installation manual, Mr. Cool recommends running in the cooling mode and heating mode at their maximum temperatures for at least five minutes just to make sure everything's working correctly. And thankfully, in our case, it was. You can also check to make sure your drain line isn't leaking anywhere or any other weird things are happening. But again, thankfully, these things worked flawlessly in our case. 
Also for controlling the units, you can use the included remotes, which is a great option, but Mr. Cool also includes this little USB Wi-Fi stick that allows you to connect it to a smart home system. Although I'm gonna be using the Sensibo Air units, which is also what I have going on at my shop. I'm an Apple HomeKit guy and the Mr. Cool system doesn't work with HomeKit. So after we confirmed the whole system was working, we could get under the house, which is one of my least favorite parts of this whole build and get the drain line situated. Again, just making sure the angle goal was sufficient so that the drain line would flow outwards and any kinks in these lines will prevent this drain line from working properly. It's just gravity fed, there is no pump. So you really need to make sure to get this right. Otherwise the drain line will back up and the unit will overflow getting water all over your walls, which has happened to me at the shop when dust has clogged up this drain line and it makes a huge mess. Definitely not something you want to happen. I also went ahead and tucked up some of the other line sets under the house using some metal strapping. And you'll see that we actually ran some of the line set through the floor joists. And this was in an effort to try to get that line set that came up short to reach, which obviously didn't work for us, but that's why those lines are run through the joists in our case. Otherwise I would have just run them on the underside of the joists and used metal strapping. So with that, the mini split units were installed and now we're gonna have heating and cooling for the rest of this project, which is super, super exciting. And let me go ahead and just turn this thing on so you can kind of hear how loud it is or how quiet it is. Again, this is the 18,000 BTU unit, which is way louder than the other two, probably about twice as loud since it's about twice as powerful. And I'm about four feet, five feet from the unit right now. So let me kick it on. So as you can hear, the unit is super quiet and I'm already getting some cooling air on my back, which feels awesome. So hopefully this video gave you guys the confidence to tackle installing one of these units yourself. It's really not that challenging. I think this is a great addition to any kind of garage workshop. If you want to like finish an attic space or basement room, mini splits are really the perfect unit. And this DIY system makes it so you don't have to spend tons of money on labor costs having a tradesperson do it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you're not already, go ahead and get subscribed and ring that little notification bell so you don't miss my next video, which is gonna be on installing the decking on the front of this house on the <laughs> tiny little deck that this house has. Also, I have links to all the tools and materials I used in this video in the video description below. And last, I wanna say a huge shout out to all of my supporters on Patreon, as well as my YouTube members. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for your support. It is hugely, hugely appreciated. All right, I think that's gonna do it for this one, guys. So until next week, Happy building.